you know, maybe tying up or, or the thumb serve in sort of chronic dehydration where... But they will be there in the right levels to then be accessed for all those body functions, including energy production. What's the foundation for, for a balanced diet in terms of making sure that that horse is fully hydrated? Welcome everyone to episode 114 of the Send Nutrition Podcast. You're with your host Brian and Peter today. And today's topic is on electrolytes for horses, facts and myths. How are you, Peter? Brian, I'm not too bad. I'm, I'm glad to be back in, in Queensland from our little five-day getaway in Victoria. Jackets are off and uh, I think the bodies are on because the weather is heating up and this is a, a very good time to cover this topic because we get so many inquiries about should I feed salt daily? Should I feed electrolytes on top? And we will go through why both are vital for horses to just really achieve that high performance. Yeah, 100%. I think there's a lot of information out there in terms of, well, you need to use a paste or you need to use a powdered electrolyte or, you know, X amount of salt or you need to do a saline. So I think people's heads are hurting in terms of like, they don't know what's the facts, what, you know, what are the myths? So we'll try to address probably what, the facts are which is the most important part and then maybe try to debunk some of the myths in the industry as well yeah 100 percent, peter i think when it comes to the vast array of electrolytes on the market it's trying to find the best product for your horse as they're all an individual and make an assessment from there but so let's just start on why you would feed your horse electrolytes and also we'll, we'll put a side note in there with salt too Yeah, and more so from my end too, Brian, what is an electrolyte? So some people might be feeding one and not actually know what it is or the or the functions of it. So I'll I'll give just a layman's explanation here quickly for our for our listeners. So electrolytes are minerals that exist in a body in free ionized form. And what they do is they carry electrical charges. Um, it's calcium, potassium and sodium all have a positive charge, and you've got chloride, bicarbonate and sulfate all have a negative charge. So what that looks like, it's, it's pretty much like a, you know, like a car battery, and, and the movement of the electrolytes makes activity possible. And what that does is, such as muscle contractions, nerve firings, heart beating, electrolyte concentrations and, and gradients also allow for the body to hold normal amounts of water, which we call hydration, um, and a kidney to adjust to the, to the concentrations of urine. Yeah, as Peter's outlined, they're really essential for life. So a horse cannot survive without electrolytes. Furthermore to that, their whole bone structure and tooth formation relies on this. Also, the chloride part of the electrolyte, it's actually used to make stomach acid in the gastric environment. So when you, we'll get into this later on, but when you look at how digestion works, if you don't have enough chloride or not make enough stomach acid, you're not digesting the nutrients that are going into the horse and then the absorption is affected so electrolytes are essentially essential for a horse to exist yeah a lot of people know that that obviously electrolytes are lost through sweat so you you know majority of what is lost through sweat is, is sodium potassium and chloride but also calcium and magnesium are also you know lost through that avenue probably not as much as what the first three are so you know you got to keep an eye on all those minerals make sure that that you are supplementing at the correct doses because they are getting lost through sweat especially now that we're getting into the you know the hotter weather around australia and additionally to this electrolytes are lost daily in their urine feces and breath so because the horse cannot make their own electrolytes it's really essential we get this right in the diet and we'll we will go through the, the sources of it in there and whether you require to supplement on top. And let's just think that our obviously our listeners are, you know, they're feeding a balanced diet or they think they're feeding a balanced diet and they assume that they don't need to add any electrolytes or anything like that to their feed. What's the foundation for, for a balanced diet in terms of making sure that that horse is fully hydrated? So the sodium chloride requirements for a horse are not met through their pasture or even a pelleted feed, they require even just to exist 25 grams of sodium chloride. So 25 grams of, of salt in the diet, that makes up for that shortfall. And when you look at our forages, they're all high in potassium. So yes, you have the balanced diet, but adding salt on top of your hard feed actually balances it further and gives that proper electrolyte profile for that maintenance without sweating and for the, the horse to exist in that, that fashion. I think that was about 25 grams of sodium chloride that a horse needs just to basically keep keep alive, yeah? Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And it's easy, it's cheap. It's not in the feeds at that high amount because we're trying to get other nutrients in it. 
And when we look at diets every day here at Sen, we normally see that this is sometimes skipped or overlooked as something as simple if a horse is not doing it the best or optimally in performance, adding salt is like the quick fix because it was overlooked. Yeah, with some of the phone consults that obviously, you know, we do, we've done, there's a common occurrence that a lot of people fall back onto their hard feed and go, oh, it's got sodium chloride inside my feed. That way I don't need to feed it. That's incorrect and it's a big misconception. As, as Brian said, if they need 25 grams of sodium chloride to, you know, just to survive, it's very hard to get that amount inside a feed along with vitamins and minerals and, and everything else that, you know, that comes along with it. So, you know, we would sort of knock that on the head and say that's a bit of a myth because most people, you know, probably not feeding enough of a feed to, to contain those 25 grams. So sodium chloride salt needs to be added into the feed for, for optimal performance and health. Yeah, and when you look at the profile of sweat, chloride is the highest electrolyte that is lost, followed by sodium. So it does make sense that your base is salt supplementation. And then on top, which we'll outline, will be your electrolytes in performance, depending on how hot the weather is, the sweating, and also the feedback from your horse, whether they're showing those signs of dehydration. Brian, there's probably listeners out there going, all right, that's great. Look, I'm not adding salt into my feed, but my horse has got a salt leak or a salt block that's been there for about eight years um, and it's and it's still sort of licking it. So do you want to maybe let them know why those salt leaks maybe are not the best solution? Yeah, so this is myth number one of this podcast. And the salt lick blocks or even the mineral lick blocks, they're not licked or the horse cannot regulate their intake. And yes, you may see them lick it per day but for how long you can't monitor it so it's best if we want to get the most accurate intake of electrolytes or salt into their diet you're going to have to add it to their feed i think an easy you know rule of thumb and i just thought of this now is if you you know if the salt lick weighs a kilo and if a horse needs 25 grams per day if you divide the kilo into 25 grams and if it lasts you three years it's not good value it means it's not getting enough Yeah, correct. And some horses will do it out of boredom or you just have to really bring them back to to nature. And yes, you can offer some, say, not even a lick block, some loose salt in the paddock if you want them to to self-regulate. But having a base in the in the hard feed is going to give them that guarantee that they, they are getting their levels required. Yeah, I echo those thoughts, Brian. So now for our listeners, they've got their balanced diet, they've got their salt into their diet now. How do I utilise and use electrolytes and when in their diets? Yeah, so this probably brings us to myth number two, and that's not just supplementing electrolytes the day before performance or on the day of performance because what they've observed in research is that giving an overload of electrolytes is not going to increase the electrolyte levels in the horse. The kidneys are actually very clever in really regulating the levels and they'll excrete just the excess because the horse can only absorb so much. So a better strategy to electrolyte supplementation is say we're seven days out from your performance, be consistent with the level or the daily feed rate of the electrolyte so that it is a consistent amount of electrolyte going into the horse per day for the maximum absorption and then their levels are stored temporarily. They're not stored for a long time but they will be there in the right levels to then be accessed for all those body functions, including energy production. That's very smart advice. And also if you did have a horse that's dehydrated or is lacking in electrolytes, if you start on a Monday and then you're feeding it all the way up until the Saturday for the event, it gives you a bit of time to catch up if there is a dehydration or if there's an imbalance or shortfall of electrolytes, where if you just gave it on the night before, you haven't fixed up the deficiency. So that horse is going into that event fully, fully deficient, which is going to affect performance greatly. Yeah, 100%, Peter. And it's really important during summer. So with all this humidity, the horse is sweating, even if you are lightly working them before the performance, they're still going to use those electrolytes. So in choosing an electrolyte, looking at the ingredient list and making sure it's actually pure. And another myth is that i think a few years ago it was even with those sports energy drinks they were still full of sugar and glucose and they said you needed the the glucose for absorption of electrolytes well this has come out to be false you don't need sugar to get the electrolytes to be absorbed in the body of the horse 
So looking for a more pure ingredient, lower feed rate electrolyte, like the Sen electrolyte, which is around 25 grams per day, is what you require. So you're not unnecessarily giving glucose or sugars with it, which will actually make the horse more thirsty as well. Yeah, before we created the, the Sen Complete electrolyte, we sort of had a look at the market and just to see sort of who was out there, what they're doing. And what we found is a lot of them had a very high feed rate. It might have been from 60 to 80 grams. But then when you sort of dive down into the ingredients, there was, you know, glucose, sucrose, all that sort of stuff in there to either to thin out the, you know, the formula to make it more profitable for the companies or maybe for palatability reasons. So when me and Brian sort of put our heads together, we said, all right, well, what do we want? We want to create the lowest feed rate. We want to have one that's fully soluble in water in case obviously some some of our customers wanted to put it into water and then have it fully fully dissolve um so we sort of tick those boxes and you know for for people out there feeding different companies electrolytes which is absolutely fine but look at the actual feed rate per day then look at the cost of the product and more importantly look at your cost per feed per day so you divide the cost of the product by the grams that you're feeding and that will give you you know pretty much what what the price is but then if you want to dive down even deeper you got to look at say if it's a 60 gram feed rate and you've got 40 grams of, of carriers you're only getting 20 grams of product so then you can dive then and go well what is that 20 grams of product costing me in a 60 gram scoop it, it'll do your head and maybe after four chardonnays or something you might want to have a crack but not not sober <laughs> so true <laughs> so true peter and also the, the ingredient ratios so you want something that is going to match that profile of what's lost in sweat because that's the greatest amount of electrolyte loss in work so you need that chloride to be over double the sodium so you've got to come to a company that's trusted and and what we've done is we've matched that profile of sweat just to be replaced in a really high quality really flexible feed rate because say depending on every horse you need to work out whether you give the 25 grams or the one scoop or you do a little bit more due to the size of the horse depending on the workload it is a bit of it is meant to be customized to each individual horse's needs and what we have found is so going back to that strategy before performance seven days out you'll just give the feed rate required per day of that electrolyte so then come performance day you're not playing catch up you're not racing down to the shop to get grab a paste for post-workout or recovery but then on a side note when you look at the pace that are available look at the cost per feed some are nearly eight to ten times the cost per feed to our electrolyte and if you wanted to go down that way you can actually make your own out of a pure electrolyte powder yeah brian absolutely right i think from the numbers that we run it works out to be about 50 cents per scoop for our electrolyte compared to some of the pace from i think i've seen from about 12 to 18 dollars so yeah look worked out to be about three or four dollars a dose or something like that yeah so it's it's not very cost effective and as we said earlier on today if you're just going to give one paste one day before the actual event like you're not getting to the root cause which is possibly a deficiency um, of electrolytes that you need to start on a monday so unless you're going to be doing a paste monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you're probably not going to get on top of it because you're going to go broke first (laughs) yeah correct it's a simple and cost effective way of getting electrolytes in just offering in the feed per day a little trick um, we've come up as well with some of our customers so some horses are very sort of finicky with powders and if 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 your horse is one of those picky ones that doesn't want to eat the powder what you can do is you can you can mix the scoop in in about 60 to 80 mil of water just mix it through and just pour it into the feed yeah perfect and that's what makes our product so unique it's fully water soluble when you look at the others that have sugar they just clump up and they're, they're very messy and what we want is the most pure product for the horse and most effective, and that that's what we we do day in day out. Yeah, it has to be cost effective for, for our customers, especially if they if they're feeding it, you know, whether it's five days in a row or or, or they're you know supplementing it on top of the salt two or three days a week. Um, it just needs to be user friendly. There's no need for any sort of smoking mirrors with all these additives to to you know like blow up you know the formula where only 20 percent is actually useful um i think our customers and the people that have been listening to this podcast know that me and brian are just trying to make it most cost effective least as ingredients as possible but most of all get a product that actually gets our customers the results yeah 100 percent agree peter and furthermore to this there are special considerations when more salt and more electrolytes are required for special horses in performance or even certain metabolic or digestive conditions so 
horses that are prone to tying up, is it's really important to get this right because that muscle contraction, as Peter went through what electrolytes are used for in the body, if they're not at the right levels in the in the horse, then you're going to heighten that risk of tying up or a muscle issue. So it's it's really important to get those levels right and not shortcut on this in the feed. And with digestive issues like impaction colic, if your horse is prone to colic, please get that salt into them as their base electrolyte, as their base sodium chloride, and maybe as insurance through these hotter summer months to get them to to drink sufficient amount of water, they need more than 30 litres of water per day, get a good quality pure electrolyte into them to really help avoid those impaction colic symptoms. Brunt, just based on water, you said obviously with you know with the summertime and them requiring more. We did a, a thing podcast earlier, maybe episode, it was in the teens, I think it was like very early in, in our podcast career, <laughs> about horses not drinking as much water in wintertime, which sort of shocked to us when we were doing the research. And the reason for that is like we just come back from Victoria, we were laughing, it was like seven and a half degrees like you know boiling rain and the wind could like literally you know like blow your eyebrows off so it was it wasn't anything Bron and I were was sort of used to but the point I'm trying to make is when you've got you know seven degrees or or, or two degrees I mean that water's almost at freezing level so it's like us trying to like scull a slopey we're going to get brain freeze like it's just not normal so a horse is going to be the same it's not going to be as keen to drink a lot of water in the in a winter time and a lot of the performance horses still perform so if they're not drinking the water or as much as what they should because the water is almost freezing and god forbid they're not getting an electrolyte or salt you're going to run into some some big problems maybe not right there and then but it might take three to six months for that problem to to sort of show its face yeah no that's really well said peter we've got to really get on top of those levels not in the last minute but when a horse is asked to perform at their peak, they're going to require that access to those electrolytes. And another aspect to all this is the blood tests. So when you happen to take a blood test in performance or if you're suspecting the horse is a bit off, the blood tests only show up severe deficiencies. So these concentrations of electrolytes can be altered even in just exercise and the stress on the body and in illness. So they're not a good indicator of whether there's adequate electrolytes going in because look at it this way, if you are not supplying enough calcium, which is an electrolyte, the horse's bones are breaking down to promote higher calcium levels in the blood to be used in other parts like the muscle contraction and the blood test will show a normal calcium level. But what is really going on is the bones are weakening to try and help the whole body's system have adequate calcium to be used in the performance so then over time you're just running the risk of a breakdown where this can be really mitigated where you give sufficient amounts of electrolytes into the diet namely calcium as well yeah that's extremely well said and as i said i look at it as an insurance policy you know it's probably going to cost you less than a dollar a day to feed a good quality electrolyte like the send complete electrolyte and salt at the same time but it could be thousands of dollars in vet bills if you run to a problem with, with you know, maybe tying up or, or the thumb so even sort of chronic dehydration where it's going to take a lot longer to, to correct that deficiency. Whereas I think if you're doing it daily, you're not going to run into that problem. So long term, you're going to be way better off. So when will you know if your horse is not getting enough electrolytes or the intake of electrolytes? And quite simply reviewing the timing and intake of your electrolytes will probably come about if your horse has got low performance low energy but also the signs of dehydration as so, well so i think the people that aren't feeding electrolyte at all you like you have to look out for these signs that brian's just mentioned uh, the people that are feeding electrolyte when they should be along with salt sodium chloride they're probably not going to see any of these sort of symptoms um, if, if you're not feeding salt or electrolytes like this really applies to you so you really got to knock that on the head yeah and Looking out at the individual horse, don't compare it to your friend's horse because they've all got different rates of sweating, the way they handle their work. Sometimes when you see that it is a humid day and there's not much sun, they can still be losing a lot through sweat. And then you have to use your judgment to replace this after the workout. But if you are training or you know you're training three or four times a week, 
just supplement it every day in this heat or the hot weather. Yeah, that's very wise advice, Brian. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Anything else you'd like to leave for our for our listeners? So I think we could probably do a self plug here with our Scent Electrolyte. It's used by many leading horse trainers and and owners around Australia. Available in the 2kg and the 10kg option in all good produce stores and on our website as well. So if your local store doesn't have it, just ask them or just request them to get it in because we do have the major national dis- distribution. Yeah, and also I'll add that um, a lot of the the very good vets around sort of Victoria and New South Wales are, lo- are using the electrolyte as well because it fully dissolves in water. So when they do their treatments, obviously maybe salines for, for dehydrated horses, they find ours is a lot better because it is fully soluble and we do have those collated minerals in there as well. Yeah, and from what we've observed, over supplementing the electrolyte is quite rare under supplementation of both the salt and electrolyte is more prevalent. So what the research shows is that if you slightly are in excess or in excess supplementation, the kidneys actually work themselves out and it's a better insurance than being under supplementing an electrolyte and running into those problems, especially on another part is that nerve function and when you see horses, especially in the racing industry, have those symptoms like the thumps or that abnormal heart muscle spasm, most likely the electrolyte levels are being checked or in the diet first just to really help lower that risk because it really shouldn't happen. But with this heat, it can happen. Yeah, that's that's very well summarised. And just on one final note, uh, Brian set a goal that he wants to get more five-star reviews than Joe Rogan on Spotify. So I think he's got about 4 million. We've got 40. So if any of our listeners out there, uh, you know, do enjoy these podcasts, please leave us a five-star review. Brian sits at home and counts every single one that when he gets a preview, he's made it a personal challenge to beat Joe. So I'm, I'm in there with him for the ride to help him achieve his goal. I think I'd, I'd rather just have a glass of gin per five-star review. Maybe we do that and, uh, See where we can go. Well, Brian, after this podcast, I think we might be drinking for three weeks in a row. (laughs) Um, But, um, yeah, no, I think think that about wraps this subject up. We can't thank everyone enough for their support. We do have that Send Users group on Facebook, which is great. It's over 4,000 members now, and there's a lot of really good testimonials on there, even some questions about the products. We'll probably just touch on this because it was quite a widespread thing that affected some of our send users feeding a certain product that was being imported that had contamination we had to alert everyone through that but we've had many people switch to our send lupin pellet plus due to the same or if not superior nutrient profile to it but also it's made in australia in a feed safe mill and the horse owners are getting great results from this and having easy access because of the issues with the, uh, surrounding this biosecurity issue in the importation of a certain product. Yeah, if, if some of our listeners haven't heard about that, it's a it's a fresh cut loose and product that's imported out of, out of New Zealand. There was some sort of contamination. So, as Brian mentioned, the Sun Loop and Pellet Plus is a is a fantastic alternative, uh, very similar profile, if not if not better, as as Brian mentioned. And look, it does come in a pellet, so you do have the option to feed it dry. If you did want to get that similar consistency to that other product, all you got to do is just wet it, and it's it's going to swell up. It's great as a as a carrier for any other powders that you might be feeding as well. Yeah, highly palatable. It's a it's a really good way to also lower that ulcer risk uh, due to the marine source calcium and it is available Australia-wide. If your local produce doesn't have it, easily to request it in. We've got it in all states and yeah, it's, it's being really well received. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it, Brian. Yep, I think it's time for lunch and it's Friday and we we will might make it a long lunch. Uh, a long lunch, not a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, right, guys. See you guys. Yeah.